Hey guys, it's Thorin. Look, two days in a row, exciting. Um, I was having a conversation with a craft sister a few days ago about running an outer court. And I've made lots of videos from the perspective of seekers. I have i don't think I've ever done anything from the perspective of somebody trying to start a group. So I thought that I would ramble a little bit at you with regard to getting something off the ground. Um, and maybe this would be useful. I've, it's not because anybody's really ever asked me about my own methods of, outside of my immediate family, but it's just that hanging out at a witch shop and just generally being very public and around pagans and witches all the time and various other kinds of magical people trying to start groups. Um, I hear a lot of people bemoaning failure. And so I would, I thought I would just share some of my rules and strategies as far as my own group goes um, from a non-Gardnerian perspective, um, just more widely applicable um, for the sake of helping people kind of get off the ground. Maybe that would be useful. Um, Cause I have been, <laughs> I've been failing at starting groups for many, many years. Oh man, when I was, shit, 13, 14, 15, right? Doing the Teen Witch thing. I was dying for a coven, like dying for one. I, AOL was a thing, right? So we had AOL groups and AOL chat rooms and I was always scouring the internet and I had a, I had a, um, an AOL homepage and GeoCities was a thing and we were all on the internet and um, I lived and went to school in DC and the surrounding areas and so I was like, oh, well there's, there's this big city and we're so metropolitan and whatever, there's gotta be witches somewhere, right? Um, but it was, I was just kind of possessed by this sort of desperation for other people. And I think that those sorts of feelings are really common. Um, unfortunately, those feelings lead us to make very poor choices sometimes. So um, I'm gonna throw some tips at you and hopefully these will be helpful. Um, the first thing, is that you really have to be you really have to be specific about what you want. Um, consider the kind of pagan or magical practitioner that you are, and may, I mean you have to make a decision about what you want. Do you want a book club? Do you are you looking for best friends? Are you looking for a group that practices magic and spells together? Are you looking for I mean are you looking for camaraderie? Are you looking for conversation? Right like. Um, and a lot of people will go, oh, all of it, I want all of it. But no, like you really have to sort of get it together and focus what you're going to be. Are you going to be, are you going to have some kind of hierarchy or structure? Are you, are you seriously just looking for friends? Because a lot of the times people say that's what they want, but you have to be honest with yourself and be focused. Um, because I think a mistake that people make is taking on too much too soon. Um, I can't tell you how many folks I've met over the years who think they're going to start groups or they think they're going to start temples, right? Temple is the word that people use a lot of the time. And, oh, we're going to have, we're going to have stuff for kids and we're going to have a book that gets passed down and we're going to have reading groups and assignments and it's going to be really rigorous and blah, 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 like really detailed, ambitious shit. That sounds awesome in theory, but is just impossible to pull off when that isn't already your background somehow like it's just there's a difference between being ambitious and then just being unrealistic and it's a line that has to be walked so it's worthwhile to sit down and actually figure out what you're looking for and then if you end up with a list prioritize and go for the first thing first if your first thing is just other people to hang out with Right, like that's manageable. You can you can get that together with some sort of pub moot or meetup or something like that, and then just take it from there and go down your list of priorities. Right, and by the end of it, maybe you'll have your mystical temple. Um, but I see lots of folks who are by themselves, or maybe they have one other partner, and they just try to put together something really elaborate, really quickly, and they're just that's just setting yourself up for disappointment. Um, and it's not to say that you can't get there eventually, but walking into it like it has to be just totally amazeballs right away um, is just a really good way to feel bad about yourself <laughs> down the road. So don't do that. Um, 
you have to have an end goal. Now, in my case, obviously, um, as a Gardnerian priestess, trained as a Gardnerian, running a Gardnerian group, um, a lot of those kinds of end goals are pre-established. I'm part of a larger system, so I've got it easier than other people in a lot of ways. Um, but you have to you have to be focused. You have to figure out what the end result should look like, um, and then try to work backwards. That's that's the best way, I think, to think about it. Um, the second biggest thing I think that tears things apart and makes sure that you fail is drama, right? Like, it doesn't seem to matter how old we are um, or where we come from. We just, people really like drama. Like, especially people who say that they don't like drama and they don't participate in drama. People like drama. And I think everybody, I think everybody takes some excitement or pleasure out of it to some degree. I mean, that's why tabloids sell, right? Um, but when running a group, avoiding drama is the key to survival. And the ways to do that are myriad, fortunately. Um, the first way is by having a closed group. Now that's obviously not a surefire way because closed groups can be just as ridiculous as open ones, as evidenced by the Golden Dawn, etc. <laughs> um, but screening people is really what I'm talking about here. When you're running any kind of closed group, you get to decide who attends. And that can feel kind of icky or that can be controversial in some spaces because I think there's a lot of people out there who feel like they have to create some kind of community and they're somehow morally or spiritually obligated to open their doors to all and sundry. And that's just not an opinion I share. Um, I, I mean, maybe that's admirable. I don't know. I don't think it's realistic. But I'm, I'm sympathetic, at least, because it comes from a compassionate place. But I think we're doing ourselves a favor when we accept that we are not here to serve everybody. Like, whatever you're putting together group-wise is not going to be appropriate for everybody who wants to walk through your door. And once you get a handle on that and you figure out the sort of person that you are serving, life gets a lot easier um, and there are fewer headaches. Um, the screening process is, I don't know, like for Foxfire, it's not that it's necessarily rigorous. It's just that I, I've tended to take people who I've known for years. Um, that's the easiest way. It's sort of, I mean... It's sort of like how some people, when they date, they, they tend to only date people who they've been friends with for a long time because you already have a foundation for the relationship. Um, and I think that's a healthy way of looking at coven stuff, too. Um, when you've gotten a chance to see people socially and in casual settings, you're less likely to get screwed by them later, has been my experience. Um, and you, you have a better handle on what you're getting into going in. So figure out some kind of some kind of gauge by which you can judge the people you're considering. Um, I think it just has to be done, even though that, that feels unpleasant for a lot of folks. You just, you can't fix everybody's problems. You're not going to be the solution to everybody's needs. I think, and I think it's hubris to think that it's your responsibility to save everyone or to heal everyone or teach everyone. Like, that's just... I think it's vanity disguised as compassion. Um, and I think the sooner we shed that, the better, frankly. Um, the second thing as far as, as far as drama is related is you have to be prepared to fire people. <laughs> like some people have higher thresholds than others. I, I have a pretty low threshold, um, I think, I tell myself at least, as far as these sorts of things go. And honestly, like, it's, it's really not personal a lot of the times. Like, people, you know, we've all got complicated lives, and things come up regardless of who we are. Like, sometimes life gets crazy, and sometimes shit just sucks or whatever. Um, but when things start impacting the coven as a whole, especially early on, especially when you're talking about somebody who you're just kind of screening, when things are challenging right away, just in terms of personal drama, um, it can be best to, you know, take a break and, I mean, maybe the person comes back later, that's okay. Um, but 
you really have to be prepared, I think, to say goodbye to people who just aren't suitable at the time, or maybe at all. I know that that can be a painful conversation to have. You get to know somebody and you realize that they're just not going to work out. Um, it can be painful and it can be really uncomfortable, but the sooner you have those conversations, the easier it is. Um, so good things to keep in mind, you know. Um, yeah, I see a lot of groups, they break down because, you know, well, so-and-so was talking about so-and-so behind their back and, oh my God, I can't believe that he slept with my boyfriend or whatever. Like you, that kind of stuff is really common. Um, I think just generally speaking in uh, not just pagan or rich communities, but in people communities, right? Um, and having a low threshold for that sort of stuff is good for everybody's mental health down, down the road, I think. Um, the last point is, you know, when, when stuff isn't working, you have to be able to do something else. Like you have to be prepared to try something else. You have to be honest about things not working and you have to be prepared to walk away and try something else. Um, and that's something else that's really hard, especially for people who are parts of um, larger traditions, or they they got they got involved with with partners, right? And you end up having different interests down the road. Um, it can be really hard to abandon parts of that plan you concocted in that first point that I raised. But you know, especially if this is your first time doing stuff, doing something, even if you're part of a wider tradition, like some sometimes shit just isn't gonna work. Um, whether it's you know, whether it's some some curriculum that you designed or some book you thought everybody was going to benefit from or, uh, I mean, logistical things like where you circle or how you get everybody together, etc. Sometimes it can be tiny things. But when things aren't working, it's okay to stop doing them and start doing something else. And I think there's a tendency for people to just abandon the whole notion when things could be solved pretty readily, usually by either getting rid of somebody or not doing a thing anymore. So anyway, those are just starting points, I think. there's It's a really complicated process and it can be really, really discouraging and just, it's really challenging no matter who you are and how much support you have. Um, but especially if you're starting from the ground up and you're doing it by yourself, it's really challenging. You're gonna fail a whole lot, you just are. Um, Corvus started an open group here in Charlotte, and she tells these stories about how when she first started, you know, nobody showed up. She would post ads in the paper and online and whatever, and it took, it took months of her doing things several times a month before she got two people, three people, then four people. Um, and now, several years later, she, she can easily, she definitely has at least a dozen people and sometimes upwards of 50 at open events. But that kind of shit takes years, so you have to be patient. Anyway, I hope that was helpful. The sun is going down and things are getting darker, so I'm going to stop. But I hope you guys are well, and I will talk to you next time.